Saxon Advanced Mathematics, Lesson 115. Coming close to the end. Uh, this lesson is called the Remainder Theorem. It is an interesting little trick that we can use to simplify polynomials, to, to evaluate polynomials, and it will probably feel a little obscure in this lesson, but in our next lesson, we're going to use it in a bigger calculation, and I think it makes a lot more sense then. So um, withhold any judgment you have for the end of lesson 116, and we'll see if it makes sense. The basic idea, let me just dive into a, an example so we can look at some numbers and see how they behave. Let's say that we've got a big fat polynomial. And we want to evaluate the f of 3. Basically, what we want to do is we want to plug 3 into this and find the answer. Now, it wouldn't be the end of the world to just plug it in and do it. But what the remainder theorem offers us is a shortcut to do that. What the remainder theorem says is that instead of plugging in, oh, I didn't write in, did I? Instead of plugging in and doing the calculation, what we're going to do is divide by x minus 3. We know that the opposite sign will be what we use in our division, our synthetic division. So I'll show you that in just a second. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to use synthetic division to divide by x minus 3, and that will get us to the answer easier. Remember that when we are dividing by something like this, we say that 3 is actually the value we're dividing by, right? We take the opposite sign. Sometimes we call this a. Today we're going to call this number that we're dividing by as 3, okay? So we use synthetic division. So let's remember how that works. We're going to put the number that we're dividing by in the little box, and then, oh, let me write it this way first before I write it the synthetic division way. Let's write the whole thing. It's going to be x divided by 3, x minus 3, divided into x squared plus x plus 4. That's the regular division that we're trying to do, right? But we'll use the synthetic format, which is now when I use my little box of 3. And then we're going to write the coefficients of these. And it will be 1, 1, and 4. Okay, now we do our calculation. We bring down the 1. Then we multiply 3 times 1, and we write it here. We add these. Beautiful. Now we multiply 3 times 4. That's 12. And we add these. 16. So now we know that this answer, remember, we have to adjust like so, right? It's going to be... 1x, or just x, plus 4, that, and this is our remainder, right? I'm going to attach him in a minute. The way that we can recreate our polynomial, our original expression, which I'm now going to call the p of x, just because this is the polynomial version, no, lies, q. This is our quotient version. This is what we got when we divided. We have our original expression, what we divided by, and then this is what we got as our answer, right? X plus four plus our remainder, we write like so. Okay, so this is how we can write the answer to our division problem. Q of X equals X minus three quantity times X plus four quantity plus 16. And we could multiply that. In fact, let's just do that to prove that that is indeed 
our right answer. I'm gonna copy this to the top of the next page. The Q of X equals quantity X minus three, that was what we divided by, times quantity X plus four, that's what we got when we did our division, plus a remainder of 16. We add that on at the end. So let's just check and make sure that this does in fact get us back to our original polynomial. X minus three, X plus four, X squared minus three X plus four X minus 12 and then plus 16. That is X squared plus X plus four. Voila, that's what we have, right? So this was just our check to make sure that this quotient really did represent our original value, okay? And I'm gonna write our original polynomial up here. And I'm calling it P of X, just so that we keep that straight from, this is the divided version of it, so this is the quotient. This was the original polynomial that we had, X squared, plus x plus four, we've ascertained that these are two forms of the same thing. Now, remember that this whole thing we started because we wanted to solve for, we wanna solve for f of three, right? So we're gonna let three be the value that we put in here, right? If x equals three, now let's do the long solving. This is our test case. In the future, we're not gonna have to do this. It'll be three squared plus three plus four, right? That's what I get if I take this X and I plug it into this expression as we originally had it written, right? Squared plus three plus four. And that would be nine plus three plus four, and that equals 16. So we determine using the long method that the P of three equals 16. I'll write the P of three again back here so that we see it. Now, what happens if we take this same X value and plug it into this? Using our quotient form of our equation, it will be three minus three times three plus four plus 16. Okay, what we can see, and this will happen every time that we do this the way we just did it, one of these will go to zero. Three minus three is zero. That means all of this goes to zero, and we see that the value of this function becomes the remainder. I guess I could write it here, couldn't I? Now, this is very useful because what it tells us is that if we're trying to evaluate any function for a certain value, we can divide by that value, right? We set it up with the opposite sign, but when we're doing the actual synthetic division, that number will be the same. Then, once we get our answer, the remainder there it is right there, 16 equals the remainder. That's the value of the function with that number plugged in. So if we want to solve a function, a quadratic function, I should say, we're talking about quadratics and all of this. If we want to solve something like this, all we have to do is use synthetic division dividing by the number that we're interested in, and then the remainder will be the value of that function. Thus the name, the remainder theorem. Let's try it a couple more times and see if it makes sense. There are three examples in all. All right, use the remainder theorem to evaluate two x cubed minus eight x squared plus three x plus five when 
x equals minus 4. Okay, so we're not even using function language this time. We, they're just telling us plug minus 4 in to all of this. Okay, we know we could do that, but that looks like a big, long, hairy con 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 calculation. That's the word I'm trying to Computation and calculation were stirring together in my brain. What we're going to do instead of that is we're going to divide this thing by this, and we know that the remainder will give us the value of the original function when we plug that in. That's the remainder theorem at work. So it's going to be minus four in the box, and then we have to copy our coefficients and make sure that we have every place value. This one looks like it doesn't skip, right? Three, two, one, and then none. So we're okay, two minus eight, three, and five. So this is where our synthetic division is really paying off because it gives us an easy way to evaluate polynomials by relying on that uh, remainder theorem, knowing that whatever we get at the end of this, that's the value of that function. Okay, it's weird, but it's true. Uh, we bring down the two. Minus four times two is minus eight. Okay, that's minus 16. Uh, minus four times minus 16, let's see, that's 64 positive, right? That's 67. Now, four times 67, it's gonna be a negative, I'm gonna put the negative there, and let's just go over here, four times 60 is 240, four times seven is 28, so that's, 268 minus, right, because positive minus, and then this becomes minus 263. What that tells us is that this is the remainder, and so this is also the value of that function. So minus 263 is the value of this function when we plug in minus four. And we can say, even though John didn't give functional notation to that, we like to call that the P of X because that is the full-blown polynomial. If we wanted to write the quotient version, we would say X, it equals X plus four, right? Because we said X equals minus four. So if we write it in this form, we swim it back across. X plus four times what do we have left? This is what John does that's clever. It doesn't really matter what we put in here. He just writes some number because we know this is gonna go to zero and this product will go to zero. So he just writes some number, and I think that's really cute, minus 263. That's important, right? This it would be all of this written with the X's. We don't even need to bother because when we plug in our value, minus four, this first one is gonna to go to zero. That will always happen, some number. This will go to zero, this will then go to zero, and it will just be minus 263. So we see that the value of the quotient form of this, when we plug in minus 24, is minus 263. And we know that the polynomial version and the quotient version will have the same values. We proved it last time. This time, we are not going to go, oh, this should be P of minus 4. We're not going to go through the trouble of plugging minus 4 into that. That's what we're hoping to avoid in the first place, right? So, by using the remainder theorem, we know that the remainder is the value of the polynomial. Okay, one more. And like I said, in tomorrow's lesson, we will use this calculation in the context of something bigger, and that is really, then you'll really see it pay off. 115.3, use the remainder theorem to evaluate, and I'm gonna put P of X in front of that, and this is the polynomial form, X to the seventh, minus 4x to the fourth, ooh, big skip there, right, from the seventh to the fourth, 
plus x, ooh, another big jump, minus 3. And we want to evaluate it when x equals 2. So we want to find the p of 2. Okay, we know that this is the number that goes outside of our box. And now we have to fill in all these coefficients, and there's going to be a lot of zeros, right? So x to the seventh power is 1. Then 6 and 5 will be zeros. 4 is a minus 4. I'm talking about the exponents, right? And then 3 and 2 are zeros. x to the first power is a 1, and then we have a minus 3. Look at all of those wicked little coefficients that we're going to have to multiply by. But that's okay. Look what easy numbers they are. We bring down the 1. 2 times 1 is 2. We always add 2. 2 times 2 is 4. We add 4. 2 times 4 is 8. We add positive 4. Now, one thing I want to point out to you is that all of these coefficients that we're calculating here, we need to do them in order to get to the remainder, but the only number we need is the remainder. So we're just following through this process to crank out that last number, and that's the one that will be the answer we're looking for. Okay, uh, what did I do? I said this was four, I said this was four. Two times four is eight again. Two times eight is 16. And I'm adding, right? I'm always adding here. 2 times 16 is 32. I add, I get 33. And then this is 66. With negative 3, that means our remainder is 63. So what that tells us, using our remainder theorem, is that the P of 2 equals 63. And that's our final answer. That's this whole thing solved for two. And we didn't have to do any heavy lifting. We just did a quick round of synthetic division, found the remainder, and know that thanks to the remainder theorem, that is the value of the polynomial, right? Woo, okay. That is lesson 115. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, we will revisit it tomorrow in lesson 116, and I will see you then. Goodbye. Bye.